Lord God, you, you reign over all this earth, you reign over the heavens, you reign over this city. So Lord, please reign over our lives, over our hearts. We ask that you open our hearts, open our ears, that we may see you, that we may hear you, that we may know you fully for who you really are. Thank you, Father, for your great love, your great, amazing love. church sing it out open my eyes to see your glorious face you're all I see Lord your love is here your mercy near your love is great Yo 
sing it out. taking away our shame and for replacing it with your amazing grace. And we just thank you, Jesus. We lift you up in this place. Oh, Jesus. From darkness to light, from death into light, his grace changed. to all, sting to whiter than snow, His grace changes everything, His grace changes everything, and there's no sin to great, there's no pain to deep, the cross declares it is done. No shame to real that his love won't heal forever. The victory is won. He has broken the chains, he has conquered the grave. His grace changes everything. And by the power of his blood, we are done. 
Jesus, that your grace is sufficient for all of us. Lord, it's so tangible. Lord, we've seen your grace in the past, even for the past 16 years. That you've been with us. For the past 16 years, you've been even opening more doors for all of us. Lord, doors for breakthroughs, Lord, open doors for ministry, even lives being changed. Lord, thank you so much for even using this church using every one of us individually to extend the gospel to people, not just here in Zamboanga, but even to the surrounding cities and even barangays and islands. Lord, we thank you. We always go back to you and acknowledge that your grace is sufficient for us. For your power is made perfect in our weakness. Lord, thank you so much, even for today. We just want to recognize your love, your grace, your overflowing strength, Lord God, in our lives that we cannot imagine apart from you. We cannot imagine our lives, Lord God, apart from your goodness, apart from your grace and, and mercy that are new every morning. Lord, we thank you. We just want to honor you today for the rest of our lives. We just want to give our highest praise, Lord, a praise of celebration of your goodness and of your faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, let's give God glory. Let's give God honor. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. All right. Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Wala pong upo. Tayo po tayong lahat. Tayo. Para todo. 
Ayun po tayo. And I want us to please move around and greet everyone. Happy 16th year anniversary. Come on. Sige. Ikot po tayo. Walang uupo. Go ahead. Happy 16th year anniversary. Okay, magandang umaga sa inyo lahat. Good morning, Nastias, Monastere, Todos, especially those who are viewing and watching us live sa MCTV at saka sa ating e-media. Live po tayo ngayon. And we, this is, uh, today is our 16th year anniversary. So, God has been faithful no, for the past 16 years and we truly believe that He will be faithful for the next 16 years. Are you excited? What God is brewing for all of us <laughs> as a church. Anyway, uh, we're here to honor God and make disciples, even since day one, when the missionaries, even since Pastor Richie came here in Zamboanga City, they trumpet the vision to us. They were student pa kami noon. And see, let's honor God, let's make disciples. And uh, even up to this time, we, we trumpet that vision and mission of the church to honor God and make disciples. So uh, we're so blessed. Uh, if you're here, part of a victory group, uh, can you please raise your hand if you're part of a victory group during the week? Pwede mong taas ng kamay? Yan, okay. Pwede mong palakpakan sila? These are people who are committed to grow in the relationship with God and with others every week. Imagine mo yan, every week yan. Anyway, <laughs> sige. Um, I just want to also announce that wala po tayong youth service this coming November 1st. Alright? November 1st, wala youth service. Kasi pag meron tayo, baka nag-iisa lang tayo doon. Iba yung kasama natin doon. Di ba? Walang tao siguro sa center niyan. November 1. But in the morning, November 1, November 1st, meron po tayong uh, worship and parang uh, prayer ministry. So if you're interested, you can join, uh, attend the, the worship and prayer ministry. November 1st po yan. 8 a.m. magsistart. Alright, sige. Now, question lang po before I call on uh, Pastor TJ for the for encouraging us uh, to encourage us to before we give our God's an offering, tanong ko lang po, sino dito you were with us for the past 16 years? Yung, yung 16 years na po in church, meron ba dito? Echo. Si Eddie ko dito. Di ba? Sige, if you're saying you're 15 years already in the church, andito ba? Meron ka? 15 years. Sige, 14 years in church. Oh, Steve. Oh, <laughs> si Cecil. Now, 14 years, 13 years in church, meron ba? Wala. 12 years. Oh, it's not the loose. <laughs> 11 years. 11. I'm scanning. 11 years. Wala. 10 years na kayo in victory. Dito sa... Wala. Okay. Andon sa likod. Ayan, sino ba yan? Oh, si Queen. <laughs> Alright. Sige. Uh, 9 years. Oh, si Doc. Andon si Doc Hemson sa likod. Sige. 8 years in, in church. In victory. 8. Quilando. Who else? Wow. Kuwate Nelia. With the quest. And don't. Sige. Seven years na in church. Oh, si Bibi. Okay. And then, yun, si Martin. Seven, six, five. All right, si Dante. Four. Ayan. Si Amina. Three. Ang dami. Ayan. Diba? Two. Okay. This is your first year in church. Meron ba? Alright. Alright. But this is your first month in church. Or this is your first day in church. Meron ba? Ang dami, meron din. Okay. Pwede palapakan si Lord for His goodness and faithfulness. Praise God for that. We are truly blessed and thankful to God for bringing you here in church. Alright? So you're a family to us. So to exhort to us, before we bring back God's size and offering, let me call on uh, Pastor Jerry. Can we just give a round of applause to Pastor Jerry? Thank you, Pastor. So, Bago tayo magbigay ng ating ikapu ngayong uh, araw, ngayong umaga, allow me to uh, share this passage po sa Psalm 118, verse 1. Sabi po dito, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for His good, for His steadfast love endures forever. I believe it is also fitting as we honor God this morning in the area of giving, to also thank God for His faithfulness and His goodness. And I believe, you know, as we continue to be in faith, as we continue to trust Him, alam natin that we could rely on this 
steadfast love. Ah, sorry, steadfast love. And uh, I believe, you know, as we continue to desire to fix our eyes on Him, as we continue to trust in Him, I believe He desires to bless us. Like what Jeremiah 29:11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So I believe yun po yung desire ng Panginoon po natin. So in your seats or envelope where you could put God ties and offering, please, uh, if meron kayong mga prayer requests, please wag niyo pong kalimutan isulat yung mga prayer requests niyo. And also, if there's also answered prayer. So bago po tayo magbigay ng ating ikapu, can we just uh, have a word of prayer? And let's just uh, be thankful and uh, honor God in the areas of our finances. Lord, nagpapasalamat po kami, Panginoon, sa inyong kabutihan na pagmamahal niyo po sa amin. Dalangin po namin, Panginoon, at patuloy po kayong, Panginoon, maghari po sa aming mga buhay, sa aming mga pamilya, Panginoon. Panginoon, salamat, Panginoon, sa opportunity to worship you through our finances, Lord. Dalangin po namin, Panginoon, kung ano may mga bagay na pinapanalangin po namin, dinigay po namin for our families, Lord, sa studies po namin. Alam po namin, Panginoon, that you are faithful, Lord. Salamat, Panginoon, na tunay po yung pag-ibig nyo. Alam po namin, Panginoon, na you are also faithful to fulfill every promise that you have for all of us, Lord. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Victory, we don't just have a few good men. We have a lot of good men. So uh, thank you guys for the very special number. Okay, if you're not yet a part of a Victory group, especially you mga men, feel free to join uh, one of these groups. Just ask them and uh, they'll be happy to uh, to grow alongside with you, all right? And uh, welcome to our 10.30 a.m. service, our 16th anniversary. Can we give God a round of applause for that? Okay, praise God for His faithfulness the past 16 years. And uh, of course, we remember God's faithfulness, but we're also rejoicing at what God is about to do in the years to come. And uh, we're so blessed to have you here with us, Bishop Manny Carlos. Um, he is our guest of honor today, but more than a guest, he's really our um, a spiritual family. He's really our spiritual father, a spiritual mentor and leader for, for all of us, especially those who went into the ministry. And uh, Pastor Manny has spoken in several significant points of uh, our lives, coming mga pastors and uh, ministers here in Zamboanga. And, um, you know, what an honor to have him here with us. He is a part of our international apostolic team that oversees every nation, but also he's the executive director of Every Nation Philippines. And uh, he could have been uh, somewhere else doing something, maybe record an album <laughs> or, or be a senator, but uh, God really had a call for his life to, to serve in the ministry. And uh, what a great privilege and what a great honor to have him as our leader and the one who is in the business of raising other leaders and uh, preparing them for the purposes of God. So without further ado, can we give a warm Victory Sabuanga welcome to Bishop Manny Carlos. All right. Thank you, Pastor Richie. Oh, buenos dias, hermanos y hermanas. Feliz aniversario, Victory Zamwanga. You know, I'm going to lang kaya ko. Eh. All right. Congratulations on your uh, celebration of God's faithfulness in you as a church. And um, I'm so glad that uh, Pastor Richie invited me to be part of this celebration. And certainly there's a lot to celebrate about. Um, I believe every one of you who are here are here because God has transformed your life or. If you're here for the first few weeks or just one time, you don't know this, God's going about to do an amazing thing in your life if you continue to follow Him. So would you give yourselves a big round of applause for being here today? I, um, there's, hello, okay, there's, uh, as Pastor Richie said, because of the nature of what I do, I do have a chance to go around our nation and other nations and be a part of what the Lord is doing. And certainly, um, you know, what the Lord is doing in your city and in your church is something that is an encouragement for all of our other victory churches around the nation. Um, I guess the farthest north I've been to is in Lawag in the north. And here, Zamboanga, probably one of the south. I think your Zamboanga is even southern, more, more southern than Davao is. Or I don't know, Jensan. But one of the, I've been to all of those cities, and everywhere I go, the same passion to worship Jesus, to honor Him, to make disciples is evident. And so, I am encouraged with all that the Lord is doing in and through your lives. And I want to tell you that you are blessed as a church because of your pastors and leaders, these men who were leading, whether it's Pastor Richie or Jerry or. Um, or Pastor Romel and the other leaders are men of God and their wives as well who are worthy of your respect and of your following because these men and their wives dedicate themselves to training and equipping you to making you successful in God. Okay, so would you please give Pastor Richie a big round of applause. We go back. Our lives have intersected in many ways in the past and I'll share that along the way in my... Uh, message for you this morning and um, I, uh, I also found out that this is actually uh, um, being broadcast on TV so I better be conscious um, you never know but you never know more from TV but radio lang siguro talaga ako baka sa bosses lang talaga makakaano but anyway here goes okay uh, all right uh, how many of you, if you had a chance, would like to know what the future holds for you? Can I see your hands? Okay. I think all of us have a desire to know our future, isn't it? 
Ano yung hinaharap natin sa buhay? And uh, I think it's, as I said, it's natural because we want to have a measure of certainty every year, end of the year, December, uh, December and then January is about to hit. Many newspapers come up with their own version of their predictions, isn't it? Fearless predictions, mga halu-halong hula-hula. Diba? Sino yung mag-aasawa, sino yung maghihiwalay, sino yung mabubuntis. I mean, all kinds of predictions that they try to make. Uh, and some of them come to pass, but a lot of them don't. Uh, if you ever watched the movie 2012, did anybody watch that movie a few years ago? Anybody? Can I see your hands so I know what I'm talking about? It was a movie that really caught the attention of people because I think when they made it, either it was in 2011 or near that time, and it was about the end of the world being predicted on December 12, 2012. Now, how many of you realize it's, this, it's October now, 2014? It didn't happen, right? But at that time, when people were, uh, when people were watching that movie, people really got scared. Well, I guess some of the things that took place, whether it was climate change or all of these things, uh, the scenario seemed to be plausible, okay? Hello? Okay. So, I remember my, uh, my daughter, when she was watching that movie with us, she was about, what, 10 years old? She, after watching the movie, she said, Daddy, I don't want the world to end in 2012. And I asked her, why? And she said, because I still want to get married. <laughs> now, how many of you know that's a good reason for the world not to end? Come on. And all of you single said, Amen. All right. Let not the world end yet, okay, because you want to get married and have a family. All these are wonderful things. And if you look at recent history, there have been a lot of predictions that were made that didn't really happen. For example, in 1895, a school teacher was talking to the parents of a boy in a school who was not really doing well in classes. And he said to, the teacher said to his parents, I don't know how your son's going to grow up, but no matter what he does, he will never amount to anything. Guess what the boy's name was? Albert Einstein. Okay? So how many of you know that prediction didn't come true? White Star Lines in 2012 big, built the biggest ship of all up in, uh, in, in, recent, in, in that nation's history. And they said this ship is so big, it is unsinkable. The name of the ship? The Titanic. Thomas Watson, the founder of uh, IBM, the president of IBM said this. Uh, when they started making computers, he predicted there were probably only five people who will buy computers in the entire world. 1962, Decca Music Recording Company said, I don't like this group called the Beatles because their music is not is irritating and it's probably guitar music is going to, you know, not be, uh, is going out of trend. Can you imagine that? And then uh, this man was applying at Hewlett Packard and the management told him, we can't really hire you, you haven't finished college yet. The man's name who they refused to hire, Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple Computer. Now, there have been some predictions that have come to pass. Uh, was this frog, may isang palaka, kinausap yung fortune teller. Sabi niya, can you tell me what? Okay. Can you tell me what my future is? And... Uh, and the fortune teller looked into her crystal ball and he said, I see you uh, in this room and this beautiful woman becomes so fascinated with you. And she looks close into you and she's beginning to examine you and look at every part of who you are. Wow, and the frog got excited. You know, she was thinking of this princess. And the frog asked, where am I? Am I in a singles bar? And the fortune teller said, no, you're in a biology class. Okay, try to remember your high school science. Anyway, so as I said, all of us try to find out what our future is. But I don't think that's really a good question to ask because none of us really know what our future is, isn't it? Well, we can make plans. Sure, you know, when you go to college, you choose a course that you hope will be the one that will prepare you for your future. So we try to do it, but we can't really have certainty. So a better question to ask than simply, what is the future? I think a better question to ask is, how can we face the future? 
I think that's a very important question. And that's what I want to speak to you about this morning. About facing the future. And we're going to learn some important lessons how we can prepare for the future. To face the future by looking at the story of one important family in the Bible. And I'm talking about Isaac and his family. And we're going to read uh, a passage out of Genesis chapter 25 starting in verse 19. And we will learn some important lessons in this story. Let me read. This is the account of the family line of Abraham's son, Isaac. Isaac became the father, sorry, Abraham became the father of Isaac. And Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean from Padam Aram, and sister of Laban, the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was childless. The Lord answered his prayer and his wife, Rebekah, became pregnant. The babies jostled each other within her and she said, why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. The Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb and two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other and the older will serve the younger. When the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. The first come to out was red and his whole body was like a hairy garment. So they named him Esau. After this, his brother came out and his hand with his hand grasping Esau's heel. So he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when Rebekah gave birth to them. The boys grew up and Esau became a skillful hunter, a man of the open country, while Jacob was con- content to stay at home among the tents. Isaac, who had a taste for wild game, loved Esau, but Rebekah loved Jacob. In one more passage, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 20, this is what it says. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your words. Lord, they are spirit and life to us. Thank you, Lord, that you have the power to transform our lives as we hear, as our minds are renewed by the preaching of your word. And so, Lord, we ask Holy Spirit, do a mighty work in our lives today. We ask this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Now, if we look at the birth of Isaac, okay, before we we didn't read about Isaac, we read about their children. But Isaac was a miracle baby, if you recall that story. Abraham and Sarah had been married for many years. The Lord promised them that they were going to have a baby. But 25 years from the time God made a promise to the time that the baby came forth, uh, Abraham couldn't have possibly have a child. Abraham was 100 years old. Sarah was 90 years old. Okay? But I don't know. There was something supernatural that the Lord did that enabled Sarah to conceive a baby. Okay? In fact, uh, you'll be surprised uh, when you read the story of Sarah, she was younger than 90 years old then, but uh, somehow she was still attractive to the, to the Pharaoh because the Pharaoh was interested in her when they were in Egypt. Can you imagine that? There must be something about the Dead Sea. Maybe the sand, maybe the, the mud there is something we can you know, make money on, okay? The beauty products of the Hebrews done, okay? Anyway, um, but I, if you look at Isaac's life, it wasn't really that exciting compared to Ab- Abraham and Sarah. Uh, he tried to follow in his father's mold. He tried to uh, Im- pretend that he was the s- brother of his wife, Rebecca, instead of his wife, uh, to spare himself from death. So nothing much happened to him, but he was an important part of the New Testament, I mean, of the Old Testament rather, because he continued on in the family line of Abraham. Remember, God promised Abraham. He was going to make him into a nation. So Isaac continued the lineage, the genealogy, if you will, of of, um, of his father Abraham. Now, when we read the story of his children, though, this gets interesting. Okay, Uh, Rebecca, his wife, couldn't have a baby. Isaac prayed for him for her, and she began to conceive. And while she was uh, gestating, while the baby was growing. The babies began to jostle within each other. Okay? I mean, you know, they began to move. Remember, wala pang ultrasound nun. Okay? So, hindi niya alam, what's happening to me? I mean, this is my first time to get pregnant. Okay? And all these babies, I mean, there's something. I don't know what these are. Or is. And began, God began to speak to her. To her. Hey, there are two nations within your womb. 
Okay? And one, they'll be separated from one another. And then what, the older is going to serve the younger. What was God giving Rebecca? God was giving Rebecca a pro prophecy about the future of their children. How many of you know God knows our future? Hello? Okay? We may not know the future, but God knows our future. What are, what, are some of, what are some of the favorite verses of people? Jeremiah 29 verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you. Plans to give you hope. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. God has a plan. Has a future for every single one of us. And so, finally, she gives birth. And when she gives birth, two babies come out. One after the other. The first one is Esau. Okay, it says he was colored red. Maputlasha, and he was full of hair, balbonic, okay, talagang balbon, yung talagang mabuhok. And si Jacob naman, yung lumabas, okay, medyo kalbo, okay. Wala akong, wala akong tinutukoy na tao dito, okay, kanina lang, maraming napansin ko sa mga lalaki, okay. Maraming may HIV, a hair is vanishing, okay, talagang, but aren't you glad, buti nga uso ngayon, di ba? Kaya lang, hindi bagay sa akin, and never mind, okay. Uh, and so when he gives birth to her, I mean, she gives birth to them, Esau comes out, and it's important whoever comes out because the firstborn has the rights to the double portion of the blessing. I'll explain the importance of that. And then it says Jacob came out grasping his heel of his brother. Can you imagine that? Oh, don't imagine too much. Okay, paglabas ng baby, yung kapatid niya nakakapit sa paan ng panganay. Wow. And so they named him Jacob. Which means deceiver or supplanter. Okay, sa Tagalog, manlilin lang, manggagansyo. Be careful what you name your children. Can you imagine naming your child Balasubas? Okay, but, wow. You know. See, names refer to your character. So be careful how you name your children. Anyway, and as they grew up, the boys became, well, had two very different personalities. Esau was a hunter. Okay, he would love to hunt game and, and he would have been a finalist in the Hunger Games. Okay, Jacob, on the other hand, was a homebody. He liked to cook. He probably would have become a chef. Okay, he was probably the Bible's first mama's boy. Okay, and Esau loved uh, Jacob, sorry, Isaac loved Jake, Esau and Rebecca, the mommy, loved Jacob. Okay, so two different personalities even though they were twins, and as they were growing up, it became evident of the, the nature of Jacob as a deceiver. Because there were two instances in the story. I, I, haven't, I didn't take time to read it, but please go ahead and read it yourself. You just continue on Genesis 25, 26, and 27, okay? Don't just believe what I'm saying. Read it for yourself, okay? But for the sake of time, I'm shortening the story. Two times, Jacob tried to manipulate his brother to get the blessing, to get the birthright. The first time Esau had come from hunting and he was so tired, he was hungry and he was famished. Jacob was, okay, was making bulalo at that time. Okay? And sabi ni, Jake, sabi ni Esau, can you give me some of that stew because I'm so hungry? And Jacob said, I won't give it you unless you give me your birthright. And Esau said, I'm going to die anyway. What use is the birthright to me? And so he gave, sold his birthright to him. Uh, he despised his birthright, the Bible says. And then... He, fed, he gave him the stew. The second time was Isaac. Their daddy was getting old. His eyes were becoming blind already. He didn't know how old he was going to live. And he wanted to bless his brother. Uh, he wanted to bless his son, rather, Esau. Because that was part of what the father did. To speak a blessing over their children. And so he calls Esau his son. And he tells him. Isaac was in his bed and saying, Son, I want you to come here. I want you to ha hunt some wild game. Some wild animal. And I want you to kill it. And... Cook me, okay? My favorite dish, okay? And when you do that, I'm going to speak a blessing over you so that you will continue on the family line. And narinig ni Rebecca, mga kapatid. Rebecca overheard that conversation. And so he goes to his other son, Jacob, and he says, Look, your father is about to speak a blessing over your older son, but I want you to get the blessing. And so I want you to do this. I want you to go to to our sheep pen, and I want you to get two young goats, okay? Gagawa tayo ng paborito ng daddy mo, kalderetang kambing. Wow! And so, and I'm going, I want you to give it to your dad, and so he will speak the blessing over you. But Jacob said, 
How can I do that? I'm not, I'm not Esau. Remember, hindi ako, ma, hindi ako balbon. Baka pag hinawakan niya ako, akala niya, malalaman niya, hindi ako yung kapatid ko. Baka, imbis na ma-bless ako, masumpaan pa ako. You know what? Rebecca did, no, no, don't, do, don't worry about that. I'm going to put you, I want you to wear your brother's clothes, Esau's clothes, and then I want you to put goat skins on your hair. So pag kinapakan niya, alam niya, baka iisipin niya, ikaw si Esau. Now you have to remember, during that time, there were no deodorants. Okay? That means every person had a unique smell. Now, wag yung amin yung katabi niyo, okay? Pag inamoy mo, talagang. And sure enough, Jacob does what his mother tells him to do. He wears his clothes, he makes this kaleretang coming and brings it to his father. And he gives it to his father and says, Father, Father, here's the, uh, this is your son Isaac. And remember, bulag, halos bulag na si Isaac noon, hindi na makakita. And uh, this is the dish you want me to make. I want you to pray a blessing over me. And Isaac is wondering, hmm, that sounds like the voice of Jacob. But, you know, when I feel him, he's, like, he's Isaac, I mean, he's Esau. And so he goes ahead and eats it's the dish, and then he says, I'm going to speak a blessing over you now. And so he brings him close to his side. And as soon as Isaac smells the clothes of Esau, which was worn by Jacob, he said in the Bible, you can read it, it says, he smelled his clothes, he smelled him, and it smelled like the field that's been freshly blessed by God. Sa Tagalog, amoy lupa siya. Okay, beside you, with you, okay? If you read it, that's what it says. And so he begins to speak a blessing over him. He said, may, may your fields be blessed. May your family multiply. May you triumph over your enemies. He speaks all of this blessing. And so Abra- uh, Jacob gets the blessing of his brother. But after that, he goes. As soon as he leaves, his brother Esau comes out excited, you know, to bring the wild game he hunted and the dish he had made because he knows he's going to get the blessing. And so he says, Father, Father, here I am. I've come to bring your dish. And Isaac begins to wonder, what do you mean? I, you just came from me. What happened? And then it dawns on both of them that it was Jacob who pretended to be his brother. And so the Bible says, Isaac trembled violently. Nanginig talaga. Oh man, and then Esau realized, oh no, my brother tricked me again. And so he lets out this cry. Bumulya, umiyak, talagang humiyaw ng gusto. Father, Father, bless me too, bless me too. But Isaac says, I'm sorry. I have no more blessing left to give because I've already given my blessing and the blessing will do its work. But is there no blessing for me? And Isaac said, well, I know, I really have a teeny weeny blessing left for you. And so he speaks the blessing over, a small blessing over his brother. And you know what? From that time on, Esau nursed a grudge. Nagkaroon siya ng sama ng loob sa kapatid niya. And he said to himself, once my daddy dies, I'm going to kill my brother. Wow. See the problems that were caused by brothers, manipulating brothers. You know, that's sad to say that that still happens to this day, isn't it? In some families. Magkakapatid na, nag-aaway pa, nagkakagulangan pa. But that's not my point. My point is this. If you read Hebrews chapter 11, verse 20, though, this is interesting. Remember, the New Testament mo- interprets what happened in the Old Testament. This was the story in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, what does it say? It says, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. Wala pong condemnation. There was no saying that Jacob did something wrong. At least as far as the, old, the New Testament writer is concerned. Now, I'm going to make an important point here, which is really the whole point of this message. Now, but before that, Hebrews 11.20 is part of a whole chapter that the author of Hebrews commended people who were people who had faith. Okay, from Abraham to Jacob, to Isaac, to Moses, to David, all of these other people. And this whole chapter is summed up in this verse. 
Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because those who come to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. How many of you want to live a life that pleases God? Gusto niyo pong maging kalugod-lugod sa Panginoon. All right. Do you know how you can please God? If you have faith. When you believe him. When you trust him. When you believe in his, what, in his, in his word. And so if you combine this story and this passage... We, want to, we were going to learn something important about the future. And it's this. Only God knows the future. Do you believe that? Only God knows your future. And the only way you can face the future with confidence is by believing in Him or by trusting in His Word. That's the only way. Because He knows what's up ahead. You don't, but He knows. And so if you're going to face the future, you need to put your trust in Him and in His Word. That's the whole point of this message. You know, when you look at the Bible, the Bible is a book made up of two kinds of passages. Really, at the end of the day, it's commands from God. The Bible gives us commands that we are to live by. Honor your father and mother. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not do these things. Okay? Pray for one another. They're commands that the Lord gives us. But you know what? The Bible is also, much of the other part of the Bible is promises. Say that word with me. Promises. God is a God who makes promises. What is a promise? A promise is a commitment to do something. I've learned over the years of being a Christian that God is a promise-making and a promise-keeping God. There's something about a promise, isn't it? A promise is a commitment to do something, and it's not accomplished yet. Do you realize that? Last night, I spoke with Pastor Richie. I told him, is it okay if we eat seafood? I love seafood in Zamboanga. And Pastor Richie said, lunchtime today, we will eat seafood. How many of you know, I have yet to see if that promise will be fulfilled? But in one hour, I will know. Hallelujah. Come on now. And I know in Pastor Richie, I know he will keep his promise. Amen. Na imagine ko na mga kapatid, yung kuracha. Come on now. Yung shell. Come on. Pati yung mga gulay and everything else. Nagutob na kayo, no? All right. Ngayon, pag after lunch, I'll, I'll tell the, the service kung na-fulfill niya yung promise niya. <laughs> so we all know the joy of a promise made and a promise kept, isn't it? But you know, we've also known of people who have made promises and they did not keep their promise. It's sad, isn't it, when we see a man and a woman come to the marriage altar and a husband says, I'm going to be faithful to you. I'm going to love you. And then five years later, the man breaks that promise. It brings disappointment. It brings pain. It brings discouragement. But you know what? When God makes a promise, come on, He fulfills His promise. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord praise for that. He's a promise-making and a promise-keeping God. And so with all of this, what does this mean for us? We want to become a people of faith. We want to be a people who can face the future because we know God has made a promise to us and He will keep that promise. And so I want to share with you from this story three lessons in faith that we can learn so that we can face the future as well. What is the first lesson that we can learn? Number one, faith lives and prepares for the future. Okay, will this work? Thank you. All right. Promise kept. Faith lives and prepares for the future. What do we mean by that? As I said earlier, people try to predict the future, but they don't always have it right. But if you notice, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, these people had a confidence in God. In fact, if you look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 20, in the Amplified Version, this is what it says. With eyes of faith, Isaac, looking far into the future, invoked blessings upon Jacob and Esau. The question is, how far... Can you look ahead into the future? See, 
what was God's promise to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob? Remember? Part of the promise, yes, you're going to have many descendants. And the other promise is that you're going to have your own land. Remember that? What was that land? That land was the land of Canaan. And when they were there in the land of Canaan, remember I, Abraham left Ur of the Chaldees and ended up there? At that time, there were Canaanites living in the land. Jebusites, Girgashites, Hittites, Buitites, Gigabites. I mean, all of these ites were living in the land. In fact, even when Abraham and Isaac and Jacob lived, they were aliens and foreigners. So when you think about it, God said, this is going to be your land. And yet they never lived to see that that land became theirs. But you know what? They were fully convinced that God was going to give them that land. And you know what? 400 years later, when Joshua, come on, started leading the Israelites to take over the land, the land, the promise of God was fulfilled. When you make plans for your family, how far do you plan? Do you just plan for yourself? Or do you plan for your children? Or do you plan for your children's children? I believe when you learn to become a person of faith, you will begin to plan not just for yourself, but for generation. I'm not talking about just saving money. I'm talking about more than that. I'm talking about imparting values to your children that you can pass on to the next generation. That's how far. Why am I teaching my children to live According to the word of God. Because I know if they live for God, they're going to have a future. Hallelujah. Do you really believe this word? That it will prepare you for the future? You know, when a, when a, when a parent is about to have a baby, when a husband and mom, what do they do? I remember, you know, Pastor Richie and Rye believed for a baby. And after many years, God gave them. While she was pregnant, what did they do? They started buying, I'm sure they started buying diapers and clothes. Come on now. The baby isn't there yet, right? But they're preparing for the future. Why? Because they believe the baby's going to come. Let me ask you this. How many of you students here? Can I see your hand? Students. Mga estudyante kayo High school, college. Okay. Do you believe that God, you're going to graduate and you're going to be blessed by God and have a good job or a business? Okay, if you believe that, I have a question for you. Are you studying diligently now? Oh, come on. If you believe God's going to bless you, then you will prepare for it. Your take, your studying is not because, oh, no, I'm going to fail. No, 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 I'm going to pass. So I'm going to prepare as good as I can. That's the attitude. How many of you are... Those who are working, you believe you're going to be promoted. Come on, you're working for a company or doing this. Anybody? You're believing to be promoted. None of you want to be promoted. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to be promoted? Okay, I have a question for you. Do you come to office on time? See, faith without action is dead. I'm not working hard because I'm going to be afraid I won't eat. If I don't work hard, no, I, I work hard because I know God's going to prosper me. Big difference, isn't it? If you know God is for you. How did Isaac prepare the future for the future of his sons? He did it by blessing them. He said, God, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. How many fathers do we have here? Can I see the daddies, the fathers? Do you know one of the most important roles you have is to speak a blessing over your children? That's a very important role. The Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue. I believe one of the major reasons why you are the way you are is because, yes, of your how you were raised up, but because if your father spoke that blessing. You know, there's still some men who don't know they're men because their father never told them they were men. The father's blessing is so important. Now, you might say, well, pastor, I don't really, my father didn't give me a blessing. Or my father was absent or he never told me this. It's all right because we have a perfect father in heaven who can give us the blessing. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Amen. He's our father. He's the one who will speak that blessing over you and me. Number two, lesson in faith here is this. Faith prioritizes God's will over man's will. Remember, Isaac preferred his son 
Esau to be the one who will get the blessing. But when Jacob got it, even though he manipulated, Isaac did not take it back. Hindi binawi ni Isaac yung blessing. Why is that? Even though he was his favorite. I believe it's because he realized ultimately God had really chosen Jacob. In fact, he probably remembered the prophecy that God gave to Rebecca. And this is important. Um, <coughs> the, the, the firstborn usually has a double portion of the blessing. Have you ever wondered why that is? Bakit yung panganay? At least in Hebrew culture. And I don't know if this is practiced in Philippine culture, but I don't know. The reason why the older son, the oldest son gets the blessing is because the oldest son is expected to take care of the parents when they are old. Isn't that interesting? Okay? Makes sense. But of course, the problem is because of playing favorites, that's why they had that problem. Isaac was liked his other son more than the other. And as parents, we know we need to be careful about playing favorites. Unfortunately, in our culture, that happens too. Diba? And I, I know of a family, maputi yung anak niya, yun yung gusto niya, yung isang anak maitim, ayaw na. Can you imagine that just because of the color? We need to be careful in the way we parent our children. And so, uh, this truth points, uh, this lesson points to an important spiritual truth. Remember what Jesus said, if you will, if anyone would come after me, he must take up his cross. For whoever loses his life will find it. Whoever saves his life will lose it. In other words, if we're going to face the future, we need to let God's will take priority over our own will. Some of you have had to make decisions. I've had to make career decisions. I wanted to be in business. I wanted to be in government. But God called me to the ministry. And I surrendered and said, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. And 25 years later, God has given me the privilege of being able to speak the word and disciple other leaders and so on and so forth. So when in the life of Isaac, we see that he prioritized God's will over his will. Which brings us to lesson number three and the last lesson. And it's this. Faith fulfills the promises. The purpose rather of God. The second lesson, Isaac did not change his mind even if Jacob manipulated for the blessing. The third lesson is this. In spite of Jacob's and Rebekah's manipulation, God still blessed Jacob. Now that's kind of strange, isn't it? What do you mean? It's okay to lie, to cheat? No, that's not what I'm saying. In fact, if you realize Jacob reaped the consequence of his manipulating his brother. Jacob ran away from his brother for 20 years. And finally, when he was about to meet Esau, takot na takot siya kasi akala niya, papatayin pa siya nung kapatid niya. That's a whole story in and of itself. And Jacob, because he was a manipulative person, had to wrestle with God. And God had to wrestle him to make him surrender and trust that God can work on his behalf. But see, the point, the lesson is this. Um, in spite of Jacob's manipulation, God still had a plan for him. And what do we learn from this story? We realize that God is sovereign. He's in control. But He still gives us the choice to make our own decisions. Now, does that mean we can make mistakes and do things? No, as I said, we will reap the consequence. But in spite, the point is this. Okay, God can still move in such a way that His purpose will be fulfilled in your life. Pastor Joel Osteen told the story of this friend of his who was working for a real estate company. And this friend of his was telling him how for whatever reason, he doesn't understand why, yung boss niya, mainit lagi yung ulo, yung, o yung dugo sa kanya. Okay? So he was working for this real estate company. His boss was didn't like him. So one time he made a mistake in his work 
and the boss fired him. And it was a very unjust reason. It seemed like a small reason. And he was opening up to Pastor Joel and said, please pray for me because I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm tempted to feel bitter and angry at this man. And Pastor Joel prayed for him and he told him this. He said, I feel like God is telling me to tell you, don't worry about losing your job. Start your own real estate business. And so he did. And the Lord began to bless him. And before long, he would start buying up office spaces and uh, small buildings. In the meantime, his boss was working for this other company. The business started losing money. And it lost money after a while. They had to leave their big office space and get smaller office spaces to keep the business running. And so when he was trying to look for office space, he chose his particular office space. And guess who owned that small office space? It was the guy he fired. How many of you know God causes all things, come on now, to work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. No matter what happens in your life, good things or bad, God's plan and purpose for you will be fulfilled if you will have faith. Let me just try to close by helping us understand ultimately what Jacob, what Isaac and J Abraham, Isaac and Jacob accomplished. Remember, God told Abraham, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you into a great nation. I will bless those who bless you. I'll curse those who curse you. And you will be a, all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. What an amazing promise, isn't it? You know how that promise was fulfilled? Abraham gave birth to Isaac. Isaac gave birth to Jacob. Jacob gave birth to the 12 tribes. And from the 12 tribes came the great nation, the nation of Israel. And from the nation of Israel, what happened? Out came the Lord Jesus Christ. And through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God did something powerful. He said Jesus Christ became a curse for us so we could be set free from the curse of the law and the blessing given to Abraham will be given to those who believe. Let me tell you, if you have faith in Christ, come on, how many of you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Guess what? The blessing that was given to Abraham becomes yours as well through Jesus Christ. That's ultimately the blessing that God gives. And when you have Christ in you, no matter what it is you're going through, God will not only secure your future, but He will give your few, He will bless your future. Amen. I want us to bow down and close, pray as we close. Father, thank you so much for the not just the wonderful story of how you worked in the life of Isaac and Jacob and his sons after him. Lord, thank you that throughout the scriptures you show the story of what happens when a people believe you and your word. Lord, you secure a future for them. And Lord, this morning, thank you that you are encouraging your people to continue to believe you. I'm going to pray for you as a whole church, but before I do that, I want to pray for some of you. I don't think this is true for all, but if you're here this morning and you're saying, Pastor, I need strength and faith. Because what I'm going through right now doesn't seem like the future is bright for me. Maybe I've made mistakes. Maybe people have manipulated me. Maybe people have done me wrong. Dinaya po ako. Maybe I'm like Esau that was cheated out of the blessing. Or maybe you're like Jacob. You manipulated. You, may, you did some things and you realize I'm reaping the consequence of my action. No matter what you're going through, God wants you to know He knows your future. And if you put your faith in Him, he will work in your life to orchestrate the circumstances so you will, you will see God at work in your life. If that's you and you want prayer, I'd like you to lift up your hand so I can pray for you. If that's you this morning, okay, several people. As I said, I don't think everybody needs to raise their hands, but if you're saying, Pastor, I need God's grace, would you please stand up if you lifted up your hand? para I can pray for you.
Would you lift up your hands to the Lord? Okay. By lifting up your hands, what you're doing is you're surrendering your problem, your situation to the Lord. Lord, I thank you for your promise that you do know the plans you have for us, plans to prosper us and not to harm us, plans to give us a hope and a future. Lord, as these people lift up their hands, they're surrendering the problems, the situations, the mistakes, the times when they've been manipulated or wronged. Lord, kung ano po yung ginawa ng ibang tao, Lord, na nakag- nakasakit sa kanila, Lord, I pray that they would release those problems to you. Because, Lord, you are a sovereign God. Lord, your word says you cause all things, whether good or bad, to work together for the good of those who love you and are called according to your purpose. Lord, do a mighty work of healing, of deliverance, of freedom, of restoring, Lord. Even I sense, Lord, there's some who have had, are in debt, maybe because of wrong decisions. Lord, I pray that you would, those debts would be paid in full and that they would have an abundance in this new season of their lives. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name for your grace to be released upon them. In Jesus' name. Could we all stand up as a church? I want us to worship the Lord and then I'm going to pray for you as a whole congregation. death into life His grace changes everything From broken to whole stain to wider than snow His grace changes everything His grace changes
pray for you as a church. I believe the Lord wants to, to do something. And I sense the Spirit of God saying this. No, my sons and my daughters, I'm doing a new thing in your city, in your, in your church, in this part of the world. I want you to sense and receive this. The Bible says God has given us a ministry. That ministry is the ministry of reconciliation. Say that word, reconciliation. The Lord wants to use this church as an ambassador for Christ to bring reconciliation. And the Lord says, my sons and my daughters, a new spirit is coming upon you. For even as I said to the Corinthians through Paul, not to be afraid to speak, not to be afraid to preach, because the Lord says, I have many people in this city and nobody's going to harm you. And the Lord says, my sons and my daughters, I'm going to begin to pour out my love in you as a church. And you're going to be able to have that love, even as it says in 2 Corinthians 5, for the love of God compels us, for one died for all, and therefore all died. And he gave to us a ministry of reconciliation. I'm going to give you the ability to see people not in the flesh, but in the spirit. And the Lord says, for anyone who is in Christ, he's a new creation. I'm going to cause you to reach a people who will who other people say cannot be reached but I'm going to tell you the love of God will compel you the passion of Christ will move you and the power of God will enable you to do signs and wonders and miracles even now receive lift up your hands Lord pour out baptize your people afresh give them the ability to communicate your word in such a way that will bring reconciliation Lord it is time to bring healing and restoration to this part of the nation Lord, it's not going to be war. It's not going to be famine. It's not going to be siege. But Lord, it's going to be a revival, oh Lord, that will bring spring forth from this land in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray for Pastor Richie and Rai and Rania. Lord, I bless this family. I pray for a hedge of protection. Lord, thank you that you're going to be a wall of fire around them. The Lord says, my son and my daughter, even the fire that's burned, even in your own hearts, for, for this place and for the people, the Lord says, it's going to, not going to wane but it's going to keep alive. Uh, it's going to be even spring forth. And I'm calling forth even a new generation of, of Daniels and, jo and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who will go through the fire, but the fire will not burn them, says the Lord. For even as you have experienced even my own refining, even in your own life, know my son and my daughter that you're coming out even refined and pure gold. And you're going to find that, uh, that you will not bow down to the idols of this world, but you're going to, you're going to stand firm just like Daniel and his three friends. And you're going to be an example to those who will not bow down to the idols. And, and, and the Lord says, as you do that, you're going to have a place of favor. You will even speak to those in authority. And you will be uh, just like an advisor to the kings of this place. Know, my son and my daughter, that this is an hour where I will exalt you. I will cause you even to have the word in season, the word of wisdom. And know, my daughter, that even the desire, even for, for offspring, I will give you the desire of your heart. I'm going to so strengthen you and your body. And you're going to have uh, greater fruit, uh, e even as you, your heart's desire. Ask of me, and I will give you your desire's heart. Um, your heart's desire. And Lord, I thank you for even this child, Lord, who's even the first fruits of all that you're doing. Father, thank you that even the sensitivity to the things of the Spirit, Lord, are going to be her inheritance. And she's going to be a, a woman of wisdom, even in her young age. A woman who will be one who will have the favor of God upon her. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this church. Lord, do greater things. Release your grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Are we blessed this morning? Can we give God just a standing ovation? Just praise Him and thank you.
Alright, before we dismiss with a prayer, just a reminder, next Sunday na po, we are starting our Visayan service, 4.30 p.m. Okay, sa third floor po yan ng Unicham We will still have our 8.30, 10.30 a.m. service here. And 2.30, yung taglish natin dun sa third floor din ng Unicham building, alright? If you're not yet a part of Victory Group, be a part of one. We're so excited to what God has done, but we're also more excited for what God has in store for us, alright? So let's just pray. Lord, thank you, God, for the word. Thank you, God, for the blessing of knowing you. Lord, we may not know the future, but we thank you, God, that we know you, the one who knows the future and who holds the future for us. Lord, we also thank you, God, for your wonderful, precious promises that are all yes in Christ Jesus. And Lord, we say amen. Let it be done according to your word. And Lord, we thank you, God, for the blessing of your presence, your spirit in us, which is greater, God, than anything in this world. May your love continue to grow in us, Lord, and may your love continue to flow through us as we seek to honor you and make disciples, God, in everything that we do. Bless us throughout this week, Lord. We prophesy and declare blessings, victory, success, promotion, prosperity, good health, Lord, upon each and every family represented here today. In Jesus' name, and all God's people shout a big, amen, amen. All right, thank you for coming. God bless you. Have a great week. See you this weekend.